welcome again. We are in the next world of the tools and platform track. And the next speaker is Radu, who is a core member of the Knowledge Graph Solution team. He will give us a practical demo how to reconcile data or map strings to things with zero coding by using GraphDB and the onto text reconciliation service. So the question is, can we use semantic context to do a smarter, faster, and more accurate data integration? Perhaps this is the way how to integrate data and activate its metadata. If Wikidata, which we saw today that it counts more than 10 billion triples, can be this way, why not building your enterprise graph the same way? Let's see what Rado has planned to show us. Rado, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction, Vasu. And good afternoon, morning, evening, whatever the time may be for uh, all of our attendees. I hope that you've been enjoying up to now what you're seeing, and I hope that you'll continue enjoying it during this session and afterwards. So without further ado, I'm just going to uh, start sharing my screen and I can show you all the information which we want to show you. So this is the uh, title of the demo, the on -to Reconciliation Service. The idea with the reconciliation service is to arrive at a holistic view of your data, like a whole view. In this case, you want to know about the metadata, you want to know about what sort of data you have, you want to know everything about it. So what we're going to cover here is what reconciliation is, what services there are already, and what's a reconciliation service definition, and what we do uh, in order to take specifically for reconciliation, and we're going to have a quick demo. So what reconciliation is, uh, I hope you'll excuse us if that's all the information for some of you, but maybe some of you are not familiar with it. So the idea is to start with an example, we want to make a database about famous pictures. And we call that database EX or something like that. And there's already a lot of information about pictures, but it's in different data sources. Some of it is in Excel, in text, in CSVs, RDF, SQL data. It's in different languages. There's a lot of great information in English and it's the biggest uh, uh, Wiki Wikipedia size. The most information is in English, but there's a lot of information in French or in German, which won't be available in English. There's different APIs. Maybe there's an Excel API, there's Google Sheets API, there's a JSON-based API. Well, and we get some tree strings, some IRIs, learn about family portraits. We uh, get this thing, which is, I'm not sure if it's Chinese or Japanese, to be honest. I think it's Chinese, it's Japanese. We get this beautiful Wikidata IRI, which is very informative for some system. Unfortunately, for to us as a person, it's not that informative. We get EX Awesome Photo, which is our own uh, da database. And, but, you know, all these are actually the same picture. And it's all the family portrait of uh, the Voyager spacecraft, which as it's flying away from the solar system, it's taking picture of all the planet, planets. Of course, you don't see Pluto here because it's got its planet status revoked. So reconciliation is the movement towards unified data model because when we have different disparate data sources and disparate data bytes, so to speak. Well, we have different data bytes. We can't really argue about them. When we have one model and we have one way to store that information, it's much easier to argue about. For example, if you know that John Smith is 1.8 meters, that doesn't help you uh, with the health information on, on John in any way, shape or form. Now, if you have that information within your model, and within your model, you also know what his uh, blood type is, if you know what his age is, if you know what his birth date is. You can start drawing from that information. You can start drawing knowledge about the health status of John Smith. And this process of moving from John Smith height 1.8 towards having it in your model and knowing things about it is called reconciliation. So there is a very well established because, as I mentioned, 
it's not a new problem. It's been around for a while. There's a very well established reconciliation uh, standard for how a reconciliation service should be. And uh, many, many uh, of many places implement that standard. Uh, I'm not even going to pretend that I know all of them, but I know the first few, Wikidata, which is the big one, so to speak. And the good thing about Wikidata is that it's really diverse and big. There's VF, ORCID, Open Library, Getty Vocabulary, Open Corporates, which is corporate data, Junings, locations, ordnance survey, again, locations. And then there are some um, strange uh, reconciliation services, which are not uh, not so standard and they're very specialized. Like I think that there's a taxidermy service there somewhere. Uh, the way in which I'm the way in which I know of all of them, including the weird ones, is the reconciliation service test bench. Here you are able to put in some specific triples in Wikidata, and then Wikidata is, uh, now starts knowing some tests against it. So, for example, you, you can see, I don't know if, if my mouse is visible, but you can see that Getty doesn't support suggesting entities, doesn't support suggesting types, whereas Wikidata, of course, being the leader, so to speak, in this, uh, supports all the various APIs. And you can see there we have three more entities down here, on text, Wikidata, people, service, on text, Wikidata organizations, and Wikidata location service. And you start wondering, well, Wikidata has information about POL, people, organizations, and locations, it's already there. So why have on tech separate? Is it just for demo purposes? Or do we actually mean something? Is there any difference? Well, public health services are great, but they have some uh, obvious drawbacks. For example, they're public. So availability can be a problem. If tomorrow uh, 100 people decide to use Wikidata reconciliation at the same time, I wish that they do, because this means that the service is very popular, it's getting used. But, uh, you know, besides it being great for its popularity, it would also mean that performance will probably suffer. It may even become unavailable. And also, you, will, you, you as a person who uses Wikidata, you won't be able to track your own requests through the Wikidata reconciliation service. Whereas, if you're using your own in-house solution, you'll probably be able to. And then there's so, uh, HTTP overheads. I've had one client which was geographically at the other end of the earth. And even opening their uh, wiki page was painful. It took 10 seconds to load a basic HTML page. Imagine this with transferring a lot of data for that reconciliation service. Uh, but all of those things are non-functional requirements, uh, so to speak, and you can sort of work around them, uh, but ultimately, functionally, you are using Wikidata schema. Whereas if you have your own service, you can use your own schema and your own data, because maybe you don't want to reconcile Wikidata information. Maybe you have something very specific. Maybe it's information about, uh, I don't know, animation from the 70s, Mickey Mouse, uh, Tom and Jerry, that sort of things. And you're, you also have your own schema, so you don't want everything to be mapped to Wikidata. So you can use our, our service. What, what here is, uh, here is a demo of how the architecture looks. You have GraphDB at, at its core, and you have some utilities connected with GraphDB. You have data preload and update. We are always up to date with uh, Wikidata for a demonstrator but you can have a, a, a pre-roll and update for any other sort of data. You can have security, creating connectors, you can manage connectors, and Elasticsearch is the other major part, um, which you can look at with Kibana. Then there's the conciliator, as we call it, which is just the reconciliation API, the old text reconciliation API, just to differentiate it a bit internally, we call it conciliator. Uh, and it's publicly available with the Wikidata demo, to be precise. It's not publicly available with your own data. That would be amazing, but technically not possible at the moment, at reconcile.ontext.com. Uh, and you can connect any refined client, in fact, anything 
uh, not only on Purifine and OpenDefine, but anything which works with the reconciliation API or machine learning query benchmarks to it. Like this is how we optimize it and benchmark it with machine learning. Now, what are the benefits of this? Well, we load RDF data, but we expose it as text seamlessly. Uh, you can have different configuration for the GraalDB connectors. And uh, the good thing is that mostly people try to reconcile text and CSV is in our example. But, you know, RDF is not uh, amazing for reconciling text. This is why we can expose it with the text index, uh, with the text search database like Elasticsearch. You can also have RDF rank, which, which is telling you how well connected and how popular, so to speak an object is. You can think about RDF rank as uh, page rank in Google. And this uh, this utility, uh, in fact, can help you augment the scores. So things which are higher ranked get a better reconciliation score. So for example, if you get New York, the city, the state, and the, and the county, if there's a New York county, I'm not exactly sure, uh, they'll have different ranks. And if you include this rank in your scoring, you have uh, different results based on how popular each entity is. Elasticsearch, the fact that we use it means that we can scale easily. It performs well under stress and scales a bit differently from GraphDB. GraphDB scales horizontally on the number of concurrent reads, whereas Elasticsearch can also speed up reads depending on, on how you scale it. Uh, it also has configurable preview templates. Uh, you, you can have various HTML bits, which we're going to discuss a bit later because a preview template sounds a bit foggy, but I can actually show it in the demo. Uh, and you can configure those. You can put any HTML there. And it's also versatile. You can update GraphDB data with Kafka, Sparkle, GraphQL, Roll Triples, Onto Refine. Uh, we are actually int introducing smart updates in uh, GraphDB 9.10, and we're going to look into improving them in the future. Uh, so there's also customization for uh, Elasticsearch queries. And by default, we have a decent default uh, sort of um, checkup and uh, default query, but you can go really in depth with mustache and have really in depth customizations. For example, here we have customization located in, which is an optional field that gives you a boost of five. We have type as an optional field as well. And if you match the type, it would increase the quality because you may decide to match without any types at all. And the only required field is pref label. Now, this customized template can be huge. I just I've just chosen a relatively small one so I can fit it on the screen and you can kind of ingest it because having one of our custom templates with which we tested, it would not even fit in the first place, let alone you taking the time to understand what's going on. Now, moving on to the main part, because after all, it's called a demo. I'm going to show you uh, the demo. So we're going to move on with on to refine and here we have information about Fortune 500. Now Fortune 500, I'm going to redo all my actions. Now you can see that this is a data set from 2017, which is going to become a bit relevant in a short while. Now I'm going to start reconciling different bits of that data set. I'm going to start with the CEO. Now, the CEO, you are able with the reconciliation API to give it hints, so to speak, which give you different fields which you can add. So if I open up the CEO and I look at people, it's human and it's count 300 and score is something else. And you wonder why the count is 300. Well, the thing is, it takes 100 cells at random from this data set and the 100 is the default. You can configure it to something else. And then it searches for their types in your uh, reconciliation API. And for the three top types, it returns them here. So all of those entities, all of those hundred cells, all of them are, are human. And all of them, all the three top results are all human. So we get that. And here you can use relevant details from other columns and you can use them as properties. The thing is, this is a company data set. Uh, this is company CSV, sorry. So you don't get the birth date of the CEO. You, go, you don't get the birth location of the CEO. The CEO title is not relevant, unfortunately, to this one, because remember that this is not the big, the big wiki data, which stores everything. 
and it's amazing because it stores everything and the reconciliation API is really powerful. This one stores particular subsets of Wikidata, which allows it to perform better. So I'm just going to reconcile it against human without any additional fields. And it's now reconciling all 500 roles. And let's look at the results. Douglas Macmillan, this is Doug Macmillan. And this on the right here, you can see the preview. And that's what I meant by a customizable, uh, customizable HT, uh, HTML template. Here, it's really, really good looking. With Wikidata, you get the image, you get the link, you get the, 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 small, the small description. You can do anything, uh, so long as it roughly fits the page. Uh, you can customize it in any way, shape, or form, uh, this entry. So Douglas McMillan, I believe, was the C. Douglas McMillan. Doug McMillan is the suggestion. You know, Walmart, and it says in, in his quick uh, in his quick description that he is the CEO of Walmart. That sounds about correct. Uh, and here we have the, the first example of why uh, being with a smaller data set and more performant has its drawbacks. This is Warren E. Steller, who is a head coach of uh, something called Berkshire Hathaway. Whereas if we look at it like that, oh, Warren E. Buffett. Okay, what's going on? Well, if you look at our source data, you're going, going to see that we have indexed Warren Buffett with, without the uh, middle name. So what we have is because we don't have any advanced analyzers, on Elasticsearch, and we don't have any customization on this query. This is the, ex the extremely basic default one which you're looking at. It's not going to suggest uh, Warren Buffett with higher priority because he's missing that middle name. And you see that his score is 32. With, for Warren East E uh, Stellar, it's 34. So it automatically says, okay, the, the score for this is the highest. There are no draws. It's the absolute highest. I'm going to just to select that. Okay, we're going to tell it, no, 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 that's wrong about it. And you can see that not all of them matched. Again, this is because we're missing any context. And if we move to companies which are further down the list and they're not so successful, so to speak, you're going to see more oddities like that because, again, we don't have any context for those titles. Now I'm going to move on and try to reconcile HQ state. Now you see that those states they are all abbreviations, whereas the main field for what we've stored is uh, the full name of the state. So when I try to go to locations, it's going to give me the generic location. It's going to give me first level administrative county subdivision, which sounds wrong. You know, this is because, again, it's a smaller data set and we're reconciling only against uh, specific and entries and against the abbreviations. And the abbreviations are also indexed, but as a subfield. So what I'm going to do is because I know that this is a state and I know that the column title is state, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to give it city, town or electoral district. I'm going to move all the way down to federated state. And it's going to reconcile quickly. And as I mentioned, we're also indexing the, uh, the abbreviation of the state only as a subfield. And it's able to tell that, uh, what was it, NE is Nebraska. It's definitely no, not the canton of Switzerland. So, and you can see that it's relatively decent here on the, on the, the score. Texas is TX and so on. And I can do the same with HQ City. However, now I have context. So I can go to locations and I can go the state it's located in. So this location of the city is located in this state. So if I start reconciling, you're gonna see that all of those states were matched and all of those cities were matched. Great. Uh, and Irving, definitely with the weird uh, square brackets, it's correct. San Francisco is correct. Cupetrino, correct. Omaha. I'm not going to check all 500 of them, but I hope that they're all right. I've checked manually like a few dozen before. Now, the main topic, the main task here was to reconcile the companies themselves. So starting here, I'm going to reconcile the title, which is the name of the company. 
against the organization index. And well, organization sounds good. Why not? In Star Trek and Seven. And now we're going to discuss the few uh, extra features. Now, first, there's faceted search, which allows you to look at different bits from uh, from the data, like all 500 rows. No, I just want to look at those which didn't match. OK, and let's look at the second entry first. We have AIG, which AIG, Lincoln, American International Group, Tata AIG. All of those would probably have this, the different HQ. So perhaps. I have 17 things not reconciled. I can try to reconcile it again. I'm just going to go to organizations. And I'm going to, to do this. I'm going to reconcile headquarter, the state, and the city. I'm going to wonder why. Well, that's because in Wikidata and the way we've indexed it, you don't get uh, necessarily the city as headquarter. You get the country. You get the state you get the county maybe you don't get the city that's why i want to reconcile the headquarter against the state and the city at the same time so i'm reconciling the title it has the type organization i can manually input some type or maybe i'm going to say no particular type but i think that the organization is okay and actually i can also reconcile the industry so you can have multiple different suggestions industry here start reconciling and well, now we've moved on to eight. So we've successfully reconciled nine ent entries. Now the next the next bit, which is problematic is, hang on a second, lows and calls. What's going on here? Oh, okay. That's a weird apostrophe. It's not how we've stored the data. So what we can do is we can edit the cells and have this grail transformation, which transforms this sort of apostrophe to that straight apostrophe and we can now reconcile again the organizations uh, we're going to reconcile industry and no doubt the main uh, the main wikidata uh, endpoint would have performed better because we have been able to tell you things uh, uh, but it would have been much, much slower. And how much slower we're going to look at relatively soon. Okay, so we now reconciled calls and lows. They are reconciled. And well, we still have five ent entities which are not matched. What's going on? Well, I can tell you what's going on. Um, a few of them, for example, Cigna, the data has changed. Those two are both health services and insurance. If you look at the, in in the industry, Healthcare insurance, so same industry. Uh, and Cigna, the correct one, this is the American Health Service Organization. This this one moved. It's no longer in Connecticut. I believe it's now in Pennsylvania. And this other one was in Taiwan. Uh, so it wasn't relevant in this case. Interrepublic Group, Interrepublic Group of Companies, Interrepublic Group United States, both of them have the same score because they have the same headquarters. So let's say that we want this one. Uh, CenturyLink and T-Corp, I can open Wikidata for you, but the data changed. They're no longer named the exact same thing. T-Corp is key bank, and CenturyLink, I searched in Wikidata, and it doesn't come up, unfortunately. DuPont, uh, it's with a weird capitalization, DuPont, DNPR Capital. And unfortunately, the DuPont company is going to come up but it's going to have a lower rank than DuPont, the towns in Indiana, Ohio, Uzin, Lutzen County, Pennsylvania. Uh, and the reason is that all of those are actually also organizations because they're incorporated entities. Again, that's the particularities of the data set. Still, I mean, uh, five matched, uh, 495 matched automatically. And with, with a bit of help, we've matched 497. That's fairly good. Now, uh, I'm going to show you something else. So if I open one of the other projects, in this, I want to highlight that this is a completely, completely random, sorry, that this is a completely random uh, data set. 
So what I did is I indexed FSM, which is a full, full information data set. And for the CSV to test against, I just Googled uh, GitHub, uh, give me recipes in CSV format. GitHub has this uh, kind of person who did some recipes in CSV. Great. We use that for testing. And uh, again, we're going to try to brute force this with Wikidata. Ingredient O2, let's see. Uh, yep, and this is Wikidata. This is not our own custom solution. This is not our own custom data set, which is well tailored to this. And the first entry was sugar. And um, it's suggesting me to do scholarly article. I mean, okay, I guess. Let's see what would happen. And that's the drawback of uh, Wikidata, which we're going to see a couple of them. First, it's very broad. Like it has a lot of uh, a lot of ent entries, scholarly articles which involve sugar, apparently, water as well, definitely. I mean, sugar, water, scholarly articles with these are plenty. Um, and second, because it's so broad and so big, um, billions of entries, it takes a while compared to our own data set. And yep. Um, that suggestion about taking coffee with sugar looks good now. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's proposing to reconcile sugar with two diabetes. That's that doesn't sound correct. Uh, I mean, there's a connection there. Uh, sugar cane meal is the second proposal. That's that's the factory actually. Sugar substitutes, not quite. I mean, there's palm sugar, sugar bowl. Powdered sugar, like this is the one, two, three, sixth entry is what sort of works. And you see what the problem is. It's not our own data. It's not our own set of information. I'm going to clear this. And I'm not going to take much longer because actually this would be very quick. I'm just going to look at our language data, uh, our, uh, sorry, our, uh, food ingredients data and see sugar matches to sugar. Now, because this is a random CSV, which I haven't uh, done editing on, you know, not everything is going to match. Some things are like water. Uh, water is not a, it is an ingredient, but it's for some reason not included in the data set because it's for food standards, I believe. And water apparently doesn't have the same food standard, but Yep, there's water cloth, water mimosa, sugar matched correctly. You have sugar, sugar, and su uh, sugar substitutes, and that's the key point which I want to I want you to take away from that. It's not as broad and as diverse as Wikidata, but first, it's very very fast. You can scale it easily. Second, you can customize it with how it's searched particularly, and third, you can use your own data set. This is against this data in this data set here called beautifully called test. But it's not Wikidata, it's your own thing. You can have it perform, you can have it customized, you can have your own data. Okay, and thank you, Raul, for the excellent okay. presentation. Let's have some questions. And really, the highlights is you take a GraphDB instance, you want your data, you set up the elastic connectors. And then you are almost there. You have to set up the mustache template, and the reconciliation can be seen as a search and ranking algorithm. So the first question is: How do you represent RDF relationships in Elastic Index? I guess yeah, I'll give it to you. Um, yes, this is done with the GraphB connectors, and you're capable of saying of specifying some filters. You're capable of, of specifying a chain of properties which map their uh, literal value or their IRI as well as possible to, uh, to a field inside uh, Elasticsearch and you can give it a custom name. The second question is for reconciliation APIs available only as part of multi-refine. No, you can have those, uh, those APIs against anything so long as, so long as it can send a reconciliation request, it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and can we reconcile against our own vocab? That, 
that was the main takeaway point. Yes, you can. Just to follow up, yes, the, it's not specific to the GraphDB's version of Refine. You can use it also against the Open Refine because this yes. is a standard protocol. So it was great demonstration, converting strings to things. I guess we couldn't demonstrate how to patch this, but there is also a way to automate. Yes, Thank you for the fantastic presentation. Thank you for your time.